What's up, everybody? My name is Lei Hua, and welcome to the Superfina channel. I am a Hawaii variety content creator, host of podcasts across worlds, and I stream on twitch.tv slash Superfina. Today, we are reviewing on the latest episode of Soma Spider, So What? And if you like anime reviews, don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell so you can be notified on the next upload. And if you want to help support the Superfina channel, we have a Patreon and a channel membership. Links to those will be available in the description. So we are reviewing on the latest episode of Soma Spider, So What? Episode 14, I'm rebelling, question mark, I'm self-deprecating. And if you've seen my reaction, you're going to hear this again. A lot happened in this episode. A lot. I was not expecting it because when the last episode happened, you could totally tell it was like a new arc, a new part of the anime. For one thing, Kumoko, she's outside now. Another, they're going to have Shun as the hero. We were going to see his journey as a hero. And third, there's a new opening. So guaranteed, this is, this is like a new arc, yeah? Anyways, so in this episode, we only saw like a small part of Kumoko. But it was important. Why? So we see Kumoko. She's like, you know, traveling, and then she sees humans. And she's explaining how humans help her gain more experience. Cool! We heard some of that in the previous part of the anime. The, like the first part of the anime, first 12 episodes, when she encountered humans, right? But now she's like, explaining it to us again. We're remembering it. It's like, we need to keep this in mind. Probably because she's going to encounter more humans non-monsters and get more experience because in this story i've noticed that they bring up stuff they explain things they give hints and then later on it comes back it comes back and this episode is a perfect example so kumoko she's out she's exploring she encounters humans she sees a carriage and then there's a baby in there there's a baby and then they're being attacked by bandits. Kumoko helps them. And then she sees the baby. And she sees that the baby has like a Japanese name. And then it has an English name. Or whatever language this isekai is. So when we see the Japanese name, we're all thinking, oh my gosh, it's a reincarnated person. But then Kumoko is like, why is the Japanese name that? Is it, is Sophia the isekai language version the translation of that japanese name and it's like is it does 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 kumoko not know who this is is this not a reincarnated person but then later on as kumoko's looking at this person's stats and such she's like wait this is a reincarnated person and this baby is a vampire it's a it's part vampire human parents with a vampire baby like or or the parents are they human are they are they or are they not human they look human to me they didn't look like vampires and even if they were vampires wouldn't they be able to fight against the bandits right right so they couldn't have been vampires and i'm gonna explain why so we see this baby her name is sophia she is suspected to be a reincarnated person. She's a vampire baby. She has pink eyes. And you know who else has pink eyes? Lady White and the Demon Lord. They, they both have pink eyes. And who else? Kumoko. Kumoko's got pink eyes. Mm -hmm. Pink eyes are for the chosen ones. Maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> So we are introduced to baby Sophia. And then fast forward to Shun's time. And we see Sophia all grown up. She's all grown up and she's the enemy and she kicks butt. Like she was giving Oka Sensei, the teacher who's like an elf who has like all these magic powers and such, who could take skills away from Hugo. She was kicking her butt. She kicked Oka Sensei's butt. This is why I'm thinking that Sophia's parents were not vampires because if Sophia is this powerful, 
Wouldn't the parents be that powerful too if they were vampires? But the parents couldn't fight off the bandits, so they couldn't have been a vampire. They couldn't. They had to have been human. Now the question is, why was Sophia a vampire? How come she's a vampire and her parents are humans? And we see Sophia because she was the reincarnated person who went to join forces with Hugo. You guys remember that episode at the end of the episode after Hugo loses his skills and such? There's a person who's like, hey, I want to work with you. I'm a reincarnated person too. And it was Sophia, yo. It was Sophia. And so she also confirms that she is a reincarnated person. Weird thing is, Oka Sensei knew who she was. I'm like, okay, Oka Sensei knew who Sophia was, like the Japanese name, but Kumoko didn't recognize the name. I'm like wondering, does Kumoko not remember her classmates? Besides that, we got Sophia and we got Hugo. And if you guys remember on the last episode, there's a lot of remembering. Remember, I said that this anime, the story gives you hints and it comes back later on? Okay, so on the last episode, at the end of it, we see Hugo and we see Shun's brother, Silas. And we're like, oh my gosh, we totally called it. Silas is shady. He is suspicious. And he is. So he's joining forces with Hugo and Sophia. Sophia who works with the joint demon lord. And Hugo, who doesn't like Shun, and Silas join forces with them. Why? Because he's planning a rebellion. So the title is about Shun. It's about Shun's part of the story, the rebellion. And you're like thinking, why is Silas making the rebellion? He's the one next in line in the throne. Well, it turns out that the father was going to name Shun as the next heir to the throne. Now, if I was Silas, I'll be pissed too. I'll be like, okay, I have been working my butt off. I've been groomed, nurtured to be the next heir, to be the next king, you know? And then just because my brother's a hero, he gets the throne, he gets it handed to them, I'll be mad too. I would be mad. Mm hmm, mm hmm. The thing is, the dad was gonna name Shun heir to the throne so he would be off the battlefield we don't know why he's doing that i'm pretty sure it's not to make the hero as the king the ruler of the kingdom i'm pretty sure it's to keep shun safe so he has time to train time to live up to that title of a hero because they did explain that julius he didn't have time. He was just thrown in the battle, like, as soon as possible. They did mention that Julius did go out to fight when he was much younger than Shun. Which is really sad. It sounds like he didn't have, like, childhood. It seems like he had that burden of a hero since he was really young. So Shun, he's the hero. And I'm assuming the dad wanted to make up for it what he couldn't for Julius. He couldn't protect Julius when he was young, but he can for Shun. He can do that. And for some reason, he's like, yep, Shun's going to be the next heir to the throne. He's going to stay here in the kingdom off the battlefield because he's the next king. It's sort of like in war. I don't know if it's still like that now, but back in the day, like in World War I, World War II and such, if a family has a farm and such, they cannot send out the eldest, the one who's going to take over the farm because that's going to be the one making the income, right? So they send out the younger siblings, the ones that aren't going to take over the farm, aren't going to be the provider of the family. I'm assuming that was the train of thought for Shun's dad. He was like, okay, if Shun, the hero, is the king, they can't send them out to the battlefield because that's putting the king, the next king, in harm's way. And that goes against everybody's responsibilities. It goes against the whole system of the king and whatnot. You know what I'm talking about. And I'm also assuming this was going to be temporary because you can't keep the hero off the battlefield. You can't keep the hero away from fighting the demon lord because heroes are supposed to do that. It's why Julius was out there. It's why Julius was fighting against demons and going after the demon lord. That's what heroes do. And... For some reason, Silas wasn't in the plan that it was going to be temporary. 
that's where I was like, wait, why is Silas doing the rebellion? Like, isn't putting Shun in the next line of the throne temporary? Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Do you think Silas you know, jumped to conclusions, he jumped the gun, you know, he started a rebellion for nothing. I think he did. And Hugo brainwashed Sue. He brainwashed and charmed her to kill off the king. Silas dad. Silas had to be in on that plan to kill off the king. So Silas killed off his dad using his sister. That's messed up. That's so messed up. Even though they're half siblings, that's still messed up, yo. Another thing they brought up from the previous episode is the church. In the last episode, the elf, I think it was Oka's dad, he brought up that the church is suspicious, that Shun should not trust them, he should be careful around them. And in this episode, episode 14, Oka revealed that the church was in on this rebellion. And they named a new hero after Shun was declared as a traitor, the one who's in charge of the rebellion, the one who killed the king, the church named Hugo the next hero. It's like, what? How can you? You can't name someone the new hero because the title of the hero just goes to someone. Like how Julius died and then it just, it just went to Shun. But you can't just name someone a hero. And it's like, they're doing that knowing that there's no one else who could contradict them. There's no one who could argue against them because there's no one with appraisal. I'm like, how can you just name someone a hero when there's someone out there that can be like, I don't see the hero's title on them. This isn't a hero. Is the church going to be like, well, in the word of God, this is the hero and our word is God. So you can't argue against us. Is that what the church is going for? Let me know what you guys think in the comments. So far, I've been talking about things that have been mentioned in previous episodes. Now there is something new that happened in this episode. And the new stuff is, one, June has like a super healing power. When Katya was still brainwashed, charmed, she kind of fought against it and her true self came out and she was telling Shun, hey, you need to stab me so I don't hurt you. Because Katya was gonna kill him like she was. And then Shun was like hesitating. He's like, oh no, it's Katya. Oh no. And I understand why they did that because it showed the struggle and then it showed Katya taking the whole matter in her own hands because she has Shun at the end of her sword. She's like telling her, you have to stab me. And when Shun was hesitating, she like stabbed herself. I was like. And Shun was shocked. He was like, no, Katya, no. And they were trying to heal her. And someone was saying, oh no, it's too late. She's dead. She's you can't help her. And then Jun was like so distraught. He was like, no! And then all of a sudden glowing, glowing happening. Totally reminded me of that scene from Sailor Moon when Sailor Moon was crying for a tuxedo mask. And then she cried. And then all of a sudden a burst of light. And with shoot, burst of light. And what happened? Katya was healed. She was totally healed. And it was from the power of love. Nah, it wasn't from the power of love. <laughs> but that's what powered it up. <laughs> that miracle healing was powered from Shun's emotions. And I'm not too sure if he can do that again. Because it turned out towards the end of the episode, Shun's MP was depleted. Like that healing took all of his MP. So I don't know if that was a super heal or that was just really good healing. Like he heals normally like that or if it's a super heal. I think it was a super one because his MP was out. Then we see a dragon and turns out Faye hatched from her egg and she evolved into a beautiful pink off-white dragon with wings. She's huge. She looks angelic. She totally reminds me of a Pokemon. 
the fairy Eevee, the Eevee fairy, you guys know what I'm talking about, or some type of fairy Pokemon. It's very cute, angelic looking. She looks beautiful, and she has like a fire beam kind of thing. She she can wreck them, but she didn't destroy all the enemies. What she did, she came to the rescue because soon he was about to get killed by Sophia, you know. And Faye comes in, saves them all, and then they fly out into the sky. End of episode. Now in that scene where we see Shun and whatever allies he has left on Faye's back, flying away from the rebellion, the whole suspicious conspiracy with Hugo, Silas, and Sophia, this shows that Shun is on another journey of his life. And I like it because when he was named a hero and he had his family, he had his subjects helping him, I thought that was boring. I was like, okay, he's just going along with what title he has and he's going to listen to all of them because he was being told that he has to do this, this, and that. And he was being compared to Julius and Julius had to do this, this, and that. But now he doesn't have them. He doesn't have them telling him what to do. And he's not going to be stuck at the kingdom. You know? He's going to be out there in the world. We're going to see different parts of this isekai. I'm really excited for this. That's why I like to see Kumoko's part. Because the labyrinth was different. And we now see her free from the labyrinth. She's out in the open world. I'm excited to see what she's going to encounter and I'm going to be excited to see what Shun's going to encounter because I was getting bored with that school. I was like, the same school, the same stuff, the same people. But now, I don't know what's going to happen. Shun could meet anybody. He could meet other reincarnates. You know, we could fight other Sophias. I'm excited for that. And that's my take on Soma Spire So What episode 14. I'm rebelling, question mark. I'm self-deprecating. What did you think about this episode? What did you think about this review? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want to talk outside of YouTube, there is a Discord. Discord link is available in the description. I also stream on twitch.tv slash Superfina. People who watch these videos do like to stop by the stream, have that one-on-one -on -one real-time conversation. You guys are more than welcome. I also host podcasts across worlds where we talk about anime, manga, and other things we're interested in. If you like podcasts like that, the link to the podcast is available in the description. Other than that, my name is Lehua, and this was the Superfina channel reviewing Soma Spider So What episode 14. I'm rebelling question mark. I'm self-deprecating. Hope you guys like this video and I will see you on the next one. Laters! Huge thanks to my Patreons and channel members for making this video possible. If you also want to be part of the Superfina party, you can click over here or become a channel member. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And I do stream live on Twitch every Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Hope to see you guys there, and I will see you on the next video. This bump.